Post 1 Hello all. Today I went on an interesting trip. It took me a while ago to save up for plane tickets, but it was worth it. Before I get into too much detail, I should introduce myself. Well, not really. I'm a very paranoid when it comes to the internet, and I won't disclose my real name, so just call me Dilmar. I don't know what that is about my name, but I have taken it to liking it personally. Okay, so let's get down to my business. I got recently got plane tickets to Florida and booked a stay-away motel near a special location. It was worth the six-hour plane ride for a while where I was going. If you haven't heard of it, fit, I was planning to visit an abandoned Disney resort called Discovery Island. I did my research, and it was originally known as Treasure Island in the 1970s. The mystery behind it was very intriguing to me because it would shut down suddenly in 1999. There was a lot of controversy behind the island and commonly accepted that the reason behind the island's abandonment, I don't necessarily accept that easily as others may think. Don't get me wrong, I do believe it, but solely because of the fact that there wasn't enough information on the subject to prove it. This theory doesn't settle quite right, quite right with me. There isn't any public transportation to the island, so I had to call up a buddy to drop me off there. It had been about a day since my arrival to Florida, and I've got all my gear ready. I brought a notebook for quick notes, a laptop for typing down documents, a vintage map of the island, which I've discovered on the internet, a GPS, and a geocache. If I was going to do an abandoned Disney park, I was going to hide a geocache there. I was going to bring a camera, but I had spent most all my money on plane tickets and on the hotel reservation. I hopped onto this boat and we were off. The warm Florida air swerved past my temple and into the roots of my hair, relaxing me. This went all the way as soon as I got to the island and entered in my line of sight. I can't explain it. It was so strange mixture of happiness, excitement, and dead. It, I couldn't even explain to you how I actually felt, but I did. I noticed that the air got thicker as I reached to the island. I told myself that it must be the humidity, but in hindsight, that wouldn't actually make much sense. The change was too quick, and it wasn't gradual enough to be natural. By ignoring it, my buddy pressed on towards the island. Strange he didn't seem to comment on the things I have noticed. We have arrived at the island, finally, and after all of the research, I'll finally be able to expose the world by what was really happened to this mysterious island. Well, if I find anything to expose, that is. After stepping off of this boat, I felt a sense of satisfaction. All of my hard work led up to this. I waved goodbye to my friend as he left me to my own devices. I looked around for any landmarks. After finding one, I figured out I was on the map and headed off to where I thought was the most plausible places to find information there. The place I had in mind was the information booth. By the books, uh, looks of the entrance, this definitely was a Disney park. It was well crafted and detailed. Most, most of the display looked at sun damaged, a bit cracked. Some of you could say that it looked sand plastic. Well, I guess the years of wear and tear from the unforgiving Florida weather took its toll. I continued until suddenly I reached what it looks like an information booth. The sign was faded and the paint was chipping. It was hanged by a nail that obscured to the view from the inside. I slid it out of the way. Inside was a perfectly normal information booth. As expected, there was an eggshell white desk with an assorted tickets on there. It even had pamphlets mixed in. Taking the liberty of grabbing one of the pamphlets, I ran over to the nearest bench and laid it out. Also faded and water damaged, I depicted that much of the text I could type in a Word document. I noticed something funny, though. I heard an internet connection. This place closed in the 90s. Why would there be free Wi-Fi here? Even if I could explain why it has Wi-Fi, why did I connect without my knowledge? I didn't have to auto-connect on or anything. I checked my router and the name of the find the IP, and the router's name was Radio Nick. It displayed on the IP, and it seemed to work fine. My internet browser was functioning fine. 
I shrugged it off and decided to take this opportunity to do a little bit more research. Didn't find anything that I didn't already know. I continued to copy down the contents of the pamphlet. Finishing, I packed up my laptop and continued my journey. It was starting to get dark, to which it was strange. It was only two, according to my laptop. I called up my buddy and he came and picked me up. And I asked him what time it was and as it usually got dark in Florida. He told me around this time of the year, it was June by the way, sun sets to roughly 8 to 8.30. Perplexed, I opened up my laptop to find that the time was in fact 8.30. It literally had 2 o'clock 10 minutes ago. Don't freak yourself out, I told myself. It was probably just that sketchy router you connected to it that messed up your time. Probably was set to the wrong time zone or something. We arrived at shore and I was took my rental car to the hotel. After typing this up, it's really to pre- retro perspective of how weird it really was. I'll pick up on my exploration tomorrow. I have four more days on my reservation and I'm planning to make it the best of them. Post 2. That island is hiding something. Something big. I cannot think of any logical explanation of what I have witnessed today. I felt impure. That's the only word that comes to my mind when describing what I feel. Something unholy has yet to what happened on the island. And has. And I felt that it is my duty to find out. Okay, before I get into what happened, let me level you up for a second. Here's the information I got. Remember the last post when I told you to call me Delmar? You mostly thought it was a completely random name. In all honesty, I thought so too. Remember that name of the mystery Wi-Fi signal I was getting? It was Radio Nick. Those two names are linked. I dug a little deeper in the story of the island, and I found out the original owner of the island was a man named of Delmar Nicholson. His nickname was Radio Nick. I couldn't find any records of him. But I did get the information soon after re- interviewing some locals. They said that he, he was the reclusive type. He seemed to have a dark cloud hovering over him at all times. He was an antisocial and didn't talk to anybody. I have heard some claims that he was getting this sant- satanic, freaking out satanic. That's a comforting thought while roaming around the island previously owned by a freaky satanist. But... I have heard other claims that he was a Wiccan. Other people said that he was a combination of both, or as they described it, a Wiccan that believes in the power of Satan. Just to keep in mind that when you're reading what happened to me, I had just arrived on the island. You could say I was a little uneasy, kind of on edge. Armed with the new information, I still got from the same feeling of dread as the day before. Only this time, I felt more than just said anything. I still enter the park, determined to find out of this whole Radio Nick thing. I planned my route the night, the night before, and my first stop was the Explorer's Outpost. Judging by the name, it was some sort of employee area. I couldn't find any info on it, but I was going to trust my gut. I headed up to the dock and then took a left. There was a building with a attached roof that had splintered from storms since the closing. The walls were made out of various wooden sticks. Most of them snapped in half. A small sign stood out in front. Explorer's Outpost. I think I'm in the right place. Before proceeding inside, I looked up and remembered the position of the sun. I walked of what was the left of the deteriorating front door in a tropical room. It had an information desk. I had some benches and all the ropes to the forms have fallen over and even the door leading to behind the desk was blown apart, the more so of most of the room. It was as if something was forced its way to the back. I proceeded with caution to the back of the room. There was a room with a bunch of filing cabinets inside. Most of them hung open. Half of the files were on the floor. In the corner, the particular was very dark, almost unnaturally dark. But something about it made me freeze. Something had turned its head around. Its eyes reflected on the light coming into the room. The eyes had lunged at me and right it revealed was a vulture. It stopped short of my face and instead of attacking me, it hoovered it while waving its wings at me as if shooing me away. 
I fell on my back and the vulture landed on the ground and blew below it. I bowed its head at me. My heart was racing while mile minute, but the gesture made me feel safe. It looked up at me and I pointed its beak towards the cabinet. It tapped its beak on the fence of the face of the cabinet. It read, Real Estate. I opened up the cabinet. As the vulture watched, only about five folders were present. I take them. The vulture wave its wings. Okay, you've got my attention. It taps its beak on another cabinet. And it was the employee records. I take those as well. To my surprise, I turned around for more instructions. And the vulture was gone. I didn't hear it fly away or anything. It was just gone. I wouldn't say I fled the island, though briskly walked the place that you could compare to running in fear. I sat on the dock waiting for my buddy to come and pick me up. When he arrived, I was so relieved, but it was soon, soon as I stepped into the boat, this overwhelming f main feeling of fear and dread overcame and I felt really dizzy. I fell over into my buddy's arms and drove home. He's a good friend. I took it easy from there. And I still felt really uneasy about it. Well, I don't know. I feel constricted for some reason. I thought there was something looming over me. Something that I couldn't control. Well, despite my mental condition, I'm still going to find out into what happened on the island. I should probably start looking for those papers. See you all soon. Post free. Guys, this is going to be a very short post. But this is the information I got. It was perfectly correlates with the, what happened yesterday. I was looking through those employee records, and to my suspicions have been confirmed. That Radio Nick person was a huge Satanist. The employee summary says that after the island was sold to Disney Corporations, Radio Nick, we'll call him Nicholson, applied for the employee after the island construction was completed. They assumed it was because he couldn't bear to leave his beloved island. In this first couple of years, he acted normally. But in his later years, just before closing, the other employees noticed a strange change in his behavior. Every day, like clockwork, he would walk into the jungle in the South American Arrivy section, not to be seen for a couple hours. His superiors conventionally told him about his behavior affected his workflow. This eventually led to his termination. Interestingly, though, the employee summary just abruptly ends there. But handwritten after the end of the summary was some Russian text. It took me a half an hour to picture the individual symbols, and I finally translated to it online to one word, Lucifer's foul game. This astonished me and left me a bit confused. I analyzed what could it mean, and I've come to the conclusion that this whole thing has to do with the birds. The vultures were the key. I've read up in some cultures that the vulture was considered to be a symbol of truth. I also have read that there was some controversy connected with the vultures that took place when the park was still active. Disney employees were killing vultures because they said they were endangering avian on the life on the island. I think the vultures were trying to get rid of the birds because they felt they were connected to something evil. S or someone, someone by the name of Radio Nick. That's all I have got in terms of those theories. So if any of you have any critique to my fury or any information that could help, please don't hesitate to contact me. I should also note that I used all of my food and money to buy a digital camera. Nothing fancy. It's just actually quite cheap. I'll be sending pictures if I can. I'll be leaving for the island soon. Wish me luck. Post 4 Hey guys, it's me, Delmar's friend. I'm the one who's been boating him back and forth from the island. I have some weird news for you guys. Domar is currently incapacitated and an incapable of getting out post out. He's out cold on the his hotel bed right now, and he's been having terrors, night terrors. I'm worried about even going out to the island. I really all I know is, is that I've been getting tenser every time I take him there. And the most recent ride I give him he also tried to pass off as one of those dollar store disposable digital cameras as something I to use on the vacation. I let him borrow my camera and he graciously accepted it. After leaving, I was only in my house for 15 minutes before receiving a text from him. The text said, come now, and I raced to my car. 
When I arrived at the island, I found him face down like a light on the ground. After failing to wake up him up, I just carried him off the boat, brought him to the hospital. The doctor said that he was okay. Okay, at first they thought he was knocked out with a concussion, but when they examined him and found nothing wrong, they just prescribed him some rest. So I did just that. I know this blog is important to him. So I thought it would be all right if I posted something while he's unavailable. Just to update you all who have followed this blog. He should, he should be awake by, by tomorrow. Post 5. I'm done. I'm done. I am never setting foot on that island again. I had just got home from Florida. I waited a while before typing this post for the sake of my sanity. Let me explain what happened. I woke up and don't remember anything. My buddy was there and he explained what he saw happen. We talked for a while before he left because he had some errands to run. I got comfy in my bed and turned on the TV. The TV illuminated the room and I noticed a camera that my buddy let me borrow. I guess he forgot it. I got out of the bed and picked it up and then turned it on to see if it would charge up the battery. It's a common courtesy. It was then I noticed that there was only a couple of minutes on the left on the tape. He gave me a blank tape with about two hours of footage on it. This means I recorded something. That's impossible though, since I've only had been on this island for about a half an hour. Morbid curiosity overcame me, and I decided to plug it in and watch it. It started with the waving goodbye to my buddy. I began to hike through the island. The video deal cut to me in the Alvary section of the island. Keep in mind that I don't remember any of this. I was looking around for anything that might answer some of the questions. I headed for the maintenance area, right behind the birds exhibits. I closed the door behind me, seeing the, being the genius I am. I was somewhat dark in there. Light enough as you could see, but dark enough to make you feel uncomfortable. It was a room full of bags and bird seed, some ripping open and spilled on the floor. There was a bucket from the corner from what I can see, some scrappers next to it. I could only guess that's what it was for. I continued on to the dim room, and when I find a room with a bunch of pedicils scattered on the floor, it seemed like they were ripped off by something and hastily thrown into the back room. I put the camera on by a nearby AC unit, and I would watch myself pick them up. I looked surprised and a bit scared. I showed the camera's face before off the pedestal, it was one of those information pedestals that taught you about the bird it was showcasing, and it was upside down pentagram burnt on to it. I paused the tape to clear my head, after which I, I continued, bracing for the worse. I picked up another one and showed this one to the camera, an upside down cross what appears to be a crude Mickey Mouse nailed onto it. I put it down slowly, but a loud bang made me freeze. I stood there for about 10 seconds before something grabbed the camera and run. The video then cut to me walking around outside. It was dark out by now, using a flashlight to lead the way. I saw briskly walk through the park while it was eerily quiet. The only sounds I could hear were heavy breathing and quiet footsteps. This continued on for about 10 minutes. The video cut again. This time I was in a pier what appears to be the bathroom. I was kneeling on the ground, facing in the side of the stall, and I was leaning onto it as if I was being the deprive of strength. I turned around towards the camera and started to softly sob. I was feeling uneasy, watching this as I don't normally cry. After a bit of sobbing, a female-sounding voice in the distance simply stated, Stop, in a firm voice. I did as she commanded. I hesitated for a bit. And without warning, I punched a hole right through the hard plastic stall wall and began to scream before the video cut to a new scene. This time I was in a security room. All the TVs were functioning properly, as if they were displaying different parts of the island. People were hustling and bustling around the exhibits and displays. The camera zoomed in on the day display at the corner. All I could get was TH 1999. I believe it to be the date of the park closing. Uh, it slow showed there there was the main one man climbed over the railing of the jungle. The security feed began to feed fast forward and stopped after 10 seconds of fast forwarding. 
What I saw next, I couldn't get out of my mind. All the people in the fields were covering their ears, bending over in agony. The only people that weren't there were the employees who started to show alarm. I couldn't understand why. If everyone but except me and my co-workers began to act like this, I would panic too. They tried things from shaking the people to hitting them, nothing to get them to respond. One of the employees stood up, shouting something at the other employees, and I started to run away from them, running away as if I some from something. I soon realized that it was then a black mist rolled over the island visitors at surprisingly rate. It didn't seem like mist, just a black mass that consumed the camera's view. I stopped the security feed and backed away to show off all the TVs. Just then, a soft voice spoke from behind. Hello. The camera swerves around to show see Snow White, staring blankly into the camera. Have you met Nick yet? She undergoes some gruesome transformation. Her eye sockets turn into dark black and veins around her eyes splintered over from the center. Her eyes turned white and she violently cocked her head to the side with a loud crunch. Her jaw dropped, almost touching her shoulder, as she let out what seemed like a scream. It was so loud that it distorted the audio. She put her arms straight out right in front of her and lunged at the camera before it cut again. I was wandering through what appeared to be a plaza of some sort. I, every once in a while, peered into one of the displays or snack bars. Every time I would find another pentagram burned onto the ground on my side, the semi-silence would worry me. Whispering became audible, and it was multiple voices. My footsteps paired with another, and another, and so on. My walk became a brisk jog, and I stopped checking on in the displays. I was tempted to stop the video, but I gathered my courage and pressed on. I abruptly stopped in my place while the whispering and footsteps grew louder. I quickly turned on to find nothing. While the whispering and the footsteps stopped, I let out a pain sigh of relief, or at least that's what it sounded like. I turned back around again to be greeted by Mickey Mouse. He said, Have you met Nick yet? Mickey began to finally shake, after which his eyes explodes sending trails down, blood spewing out of his eye sockets. I hear a scream from an unknown voice. Then halfway through the explosion, the video cuts again. It was lighter out. Blood was splattered onto the camera, but only for a little bit. I was sobbing again, but it was... I was just holding the camera. And walking through the woods, the camera jerked forward, and I almost dropped it. The camera pointed out to the ground, where there was an arm sticking out of the ground. Grabbing my ankle, I pulled it away and pulled the rest of my body that belonged with the arm sticking out of it. It was a sickly version of Mowgli. The protagonist from the Jungle Book, he looked gray and strangely had more contrast than the rest of his shot. His hair had fallen out, only leaving a couple dangling strands. I started screaming for help. I dropped the camera, showing a shot of multiple Mowgli's climbing out of the trees. They were all barking and yelling. My foot had just escaped from the camera's view of Mowgli pounced onto me. Also escaping from the camera's view. After that, it just got quiet. The camera sat there for roughly 30 seconds. Re Re-entering the view, I stood up and picked up the camera. I walked through the jungle for a while until I got to a cliff. I had jumped over a railing just to get it. I placed the camera down and walked towards the edge of the cliff, and over the edge I fell. I'm done. I'm done asking questions. I'm done being curious. I'm done looking for answers. I'm done. I refuse to try and analyze anything I saw on the tape. I refuse to further explore this topic. I'm done with this blog. This will be my last post. I know it may see an anticlimactic ending, but I honestly couldn't care. Feel free to speculate and discuss any theories on this. Just so you know, I will not be answering any questions. No, I will not provide the video. I'm not wasting any of my time digitally in it. The only thing I will provide is the picture I found in my camera. I brought it. Goodbye, y'all. I'm done. I'm done.